I am stood on what is a bitterly cold Thursday in January in an empty football stadium, or at least a pretty empty football stadium, in the East Midlands. Why am I here? Well, the answer to that is data. Lots and lots of data. I've come to talk to Dean, who manages the 72 Football League Scouts who work for Football Manager. Talk me through how many Scouts there are and what they do individually. Well, we have a Scout for every team in the Premier League, Football League and the National League. They're volunteers, but they provide some fantastic data for us. These guys do it for the love of collecting the data, the love of knowing about those players and those teams. They do, and for the love of knowing that their opinion on their players is the, is the opinion that we trust. How important is this database to the company? Well, well, I, I guess it's uh, probably as important as the code. This is the bit that everyone has an opinion about. Uh, I'm just looking at the time now. We're getting on towards six o'clock. What time does this game kick off tonight? At seven o'clock tonight. We better get to the city ground. While Dean got his stuff together for the game, I chatted to Mrs. Dean about being a football manager wife. There's a lot of anecdotes about football manager being a game that splits up relationships. Yes. It's been cited in a couple of divorce proceedings. You're married to the man who does the database. Yes. Has that ever become a problem? No, not at all really. In fact, it's probably the other way around, I would say. We had a friend of a friend who came up and said, I can't believe I've met, met Dean Gripton, THE Dean Gripton, and they didn't think he was a real person, because at that point he was kind of a, a football manager myth, if you like, I think. Apparently he was a very good scout, and he was known that that was a person that, you know, when they were kind of chatting online, that was somebody you should appoint as a scout for your team, if you wanted your team to do well, because he had, obviously, the knowledge. So what game have we chosen to watch? Well, it is Nottingham Forest versus Birmingham City in the FA Youth Cup fourth round. Time for kickoff. And how good were you with stats before you did this job, when you were younger, when you were a kid? I was the sad kid who used to read Match magazine and I would skip all the player interviews, all the player photos and go straight to the match stats to read the team sheets and learn who scored the goals, what the team lineups were and all that sort of thing. Hey, are your Birmingham players in on goal? Oh, he's, oh that's beautiful. Oh, Ooh. it's not so beautiful. It was lovely. I mean, oh, yeah. he's, he's quick feet, though. I thought he was going to shoot, and then he brought it onto his other foot. It was nice, uh, nice quick feet, that was. I know that's just a single moment, but rate that for me. Rate what just happened there for me. If I saw, for example, he only had a three or a four for his weaker foot, I'd think, well, that maybe would be wrong, of course. Just based on that one incident, I'd obviously have to notice how often the, the player used his weaker foot throughout the whole game. Well, let's just do it. Let's so, just put it up. <laughs> just, make, just make a note now. 19, weaker foot. <laughs> Half time, Dean, it's a thrilling nil nil. Shouldn't you be going for a pie and a hot drink or maybe even a beer? Well, that would be very nice, wouldn't it? But you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. Not when you're on the clock, eh? <laughs> what is the future of where you can go with the data that you can get on a night like this? The future really is to work in conjunction with um, a data collection like Prozone, use the software that they've recorded the game with to calculate how many accurate passes a player has had and that sort of thing. <laughs> We've had a goal. I'm actually looking at the, the goal scorer, Jerry McDonough, just to check that his strengths are heading and strength and he his jumping unit, reach. Is he? He's a big lad for, a, for an 18-year-old, is he? Let me just check his age. 17. I can't Seven. believe he's only still 17. Dean, we've been here long enough that they're actually turning the floodlights off around us. And you just said to me, you would have quite liked an equaliser at the end. Why is that? Well, absolutely, because uh, obviously Birmingham would still win the cup and maybe the chance of winning the tie, but also it would have given me half an hour extra to watch the players and to learn a little bit more about them, especially the substitutes who might have only been on for five or ten minutes. So what do you do now then? And the next thing I'll do is look to see who Forrest have got in the next round of the FA Youth Cup and then I'll be here watching the youth team win. At least it's exciting, unlike your boys who've made the title running hey, unexciting. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I turned on a wet towel in a clean pair of socks before every race. We had a saying like, okay, the only two players who are not coming to China in this window is Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. Uh, he used to Sorry. love playing with Tim. <laughs> he used to love it. 